Good morning. Welcome to the live streaming of Morning Prayer at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church, Tequesta, Florida, on this Thursday, the 30th and final day of September 2021. My name is Ian Anderson, and I am a member of the Good Shepherd Daily Office team, the ministry that brings you morning and evening prayer. This service is streamed live every weekday morning at 9 a.m. exclusively on Zoom. If you'd like to follow along with the service in the service leaflet, go to the worship tab of Good Shep Online, the church's website, and under the drop-down list, click on prayer. Scroll down and you'll see the leaflets for the week. Just choose today's date. And if next time you want to join us for the live broadcast, on or around 9 a.m., just go in and click on the image just above the service leaflets with the prayer books in the pews, and that will take you straight to the broadcast. This service will also be available beginning at 10 a.m. on all of Good Shepherd's communications channels, Facebook, YouTube, and of course the prayer page of goodsheponline.org. Good morning, Joan. Good morning, Julie and Pete. Good morning, Wendy. And good morning, Sherry. I'm glad that you are all able to join me this morning. So uh, today, during our service, we will commemorate uh, St. Jerome, who famously in the, let me get this right, fifth century, translated the Bible from uh, its original languages into Latin. And this version of the Bible was the, the version of the Bible that was used in the church for another millennium. The first time it was, it was translated into another language was when Martin Luther translated it into everyday German. And shortly after that, it was translated into English by William Tyndale and others. So, uh, this so-called uh, Vulgate is uh, a version of the Bible was used essentially from the uh, fourth century, uh, the, the fifth century until the 15th century exclusively. Um, and uh, <clears throat> importantly, Jerome, instead of using the Greek translation of the Old Testament, the Septuagint, he went back to the original Hebrew and translated it directly from Hebrew. So it was a very good translation at the time. Of course, since then, there's been considerable scholarship and we have refined the translations of the Bible. And currently the new revised standard version is considered uh, essentially the uh, literal translation uh, of, of, of the Bible. But, kudos to St. Jerome, who spent his entire lifetime on biblical scholarship and doing this tremendous work of translation. So with that, why don't we get started this morning on Thursday, September 30th, 19, 2021, <laughs> uh, with morning prayer. The Lord is in his holy temple, let all the earth keep silence before him. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbor. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we humbly repent. For the sake of your son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on us. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in eternal life. Amen. Lord, open our lips, and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, 
as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Alleluia. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. Our invitatory psalm this morning is psalm number 100, Jubilate Deo, which we shall say together in unison. Be joyful in the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with a song. Know this, the Lord himself is God. He himself has made us and we are his. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving. Go into his courts with praise. Give thanks to him and call upon his name. For the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his faithfulness endures from age to age. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. Come, let us adore him. The psalm appointed for this morning is a portion of Psalm 105. We will say together part one, that's verses one through 22 in unison. Give thanks to the Lord and call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the peoples. Sing to him, sing praises to him, and speak of all his marvelous works. Glory in his holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Search for the Lord and his strength. Continually seek his face. Remember the marvels he has done his wonders, and the judgments of his mouth. O offspring of Abraham, his servant, O children of Jacob, his chosen, he is the Lord our God. His judgments prevail in all the world. He has always been mindful of his covenant, the promise he made for a thousand generations, the covenant he made with Abraham, the oath that he swore to Isaac, which he established as a statute for Jacob, an everlasting covenant for Israel, saying, to you will I give the land of Canaan to be your allotted, allotted inheritance. When they were few in number, of little account, and sojourneys in the land, wandering from nation to nation, and from one kingdom to another, he let no one oppress them and rebuked kings for their sake, saying, do not touch my anointed and do my prophets no harm. Then he called for a famine in the land and destroyed the supply of bread. He sent a man before them, Joseph, who was sold as a slave. They bruised his feet in fetters, his neck they put in an iron collar until his predictions came to pass. The word of the Lord tested him. The king sent and released him. The ruler of the peoples set him free. He set him as a master over his household, as a ruler over all his possessions, to instruct his princes according to his will and to teach his elders wisdom. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. <clears throat> Our Old Testament reading this morning is from the second book of Kings. And in it, we hear the, uh, the, the people of Judah being tested by the king of Assyria. And uh, his... Uh, his uh, his uh, uh, his overlord or his 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 captain Rabshakeh, telling the people of Judah not to trust in King Hezekiah, whom we know from earlier readings is one of the kings who walked in the ways of the Lord and therefore was a good king. So, in any event, a reading from the second book. Of Kings. 
Then the Rabshakeh stood and called out in a loud voice in the language of Judah. Hear the word of the great king, the king of Assyria. Thus says the king, do not let Hezekiah deceive you, for he will not be able to deliver you out of my hand. Do not let Hezekiah make you rely on the Lord by saying, the Lord will surely deliver us and this city will not be given into the hand of the king of Assyria. Do not listen to Hezekiah. For thus says the king of Assyria, make your peace with me and come out to me. Then every one of you will eat from your own vine and your own fig tree and drink water from your own cistern until I come and take you away to a land like your own land, a land of grain and wine, a land of bread and vineyards, a land of olive oil and honey, that you may live and not die. Do not lessen to Hezekiah when he misleads you by saying, the Lord will deliver us. Has any of the gods of the nations ever delivered its land out of the hand of the king of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sepharvan, Hena, and Iva? Have they delivered Samaria out of my hand? Who among all the gods of the countries have delivered their countries out of my hand, that the Lord should, should deliver Jerusalem out of my hand? But the people were silent and answered him not a word, for the king's command was, do not answer him. Then Eliakim, son of Hilkiah, who was in charge of the palace, and Shebna, the secretary, and Joah, son of Asaph, the recorder, came to Hezekiah with their clothes torn and told him the words of the Rabshakeh. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I don't think that I'll, it'll be a spoiler alert to say that um, being told not to trust in Yahweh, the God, the Lord, is not a good thing to say even by a mighty king of Assyria. All righty. Our Old Testament canticle this morning is Cantamus Deu, the Song of Moses, which we shall say together in unison. I will sing to the Lord, for he is lofty and uplifted. The horse and its rider has he hurled into the sea. The Lord is my strength and my refuge. The Lord has become my savior. This is my God, and I will praise him. The God of my people, and I will exalt him. The Lord is a mighty warrior. Yahweh is his name. The chariots of Pharaoh and his army has he hurled into the sea. The finest of those who bear armor have been drowned in the Red Sea. The fathomless deep has overwhelmed them. They sank into the depths like a stone. Your right hand, O Lord, is glorious in might. Your right hand, O Lord, has overthrown the enemy. Who can be compared with you, O Lord, among the gods? Who is like you? glorious in holiness, awesome in renown, and worker of wonders. You stretched forth your right hand, the earth swallowed them up. With your constant love, you led the people you redeemed. With your might, you brought them in safety to your holy dwelling. You will bring them in and plant them on the mount of your possession, the resting place you have made for yourself, O Lord the sanctuary, O Lord, that your hand has established. The Lord shall reign forever and forever. Glory to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. 
Our New Testament reading is from Paul's first letter to the citizens of the city of Corinth and from the ninth chapter. And in it, he continues to give pastoral advice to the people of Corinth. Am I not free? Am I not an apostle? Have I not seen Jesus our Lord? Are you not my work in the Lord? If I am not an apostle to others, at least I am to you. For you are the seal of my apostleship in the Lord. This is my defense to those who would examine me. Do we not have the right to our food and drink? Do we not have the right to be accompanied by a believing wife, as do the other apostles and the brothers of the Lord and Cephas? Or is it only Barnabas and I who have no right to refrain from working for a living? Who at any time pays for the expenses of doing military service? Who pays, who plants a vineyard and does not eat any of its fruit? Or who tends a flock and does not get any of its milk? Do I say on human, this on human authority? Does not the law also say the same? For it is written in the law of Moses, you shall not muzzle an ox while it is treading out the grain. Is it for oxen that God is concerned? Or does he not speak entirely for our sake? It was indeed written for our sake, for whoever plows should plow in hope, and whoever threshes sh should thresh in hope of a share of the crop. If we have sown spiritual good among you, is it too much if we reap your material benefits? If others share this rightful claim on you, do we not still more? Nevertheless, we have not made use of this right, but we endure anything rather than put an obstacle in the way of the gospel of Christ. Do you not know that those who are employed in the temple service get their food from the temple? And those who serve at the altar share in what is sacrificed on the altar. In the same way, the Lord commanded that those who proclaim the gospel should get their living by the gospel but I have made no use of any of these rights, nor am I writing this so that there may be applied in my case. Indeed, I would rather die than that. No one would deprive me of my ground for boasting. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our New Testament canticle is the Gloria in Excelsis, Glory to God, which we shall say together in unison. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, heavenly King, almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us confess our Christian faith in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. 
On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Suffrages B. Save your people, Lord, and bless your inheritance. Govern and uphold them now and always. Day by day we bless you. We praise your name forever. Lord, keep us from all sin today. Have mercy upon us, Lord. Have mercy. Lord, show us your love and mercy, for we put our trust in you. In you, Lord, is our hope, and we shall never hope in vain. Good morning, Debbie. Good to see you this morning. Thank you for joining us. The collect of the day is the collect for proper 21. O oh God, you declare your almighty power chiefly in showing mercy and pity. Grant us the fullness of your grace that we, running to obtain your promises, may become partakers of your heavenly treasure. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, forever and ever. Amen. The Collect to Commemorate St. Jerome, scholar, translator, and theologian who died in the year 420. O God, who gave us the Holy Scriptures for a light to shine upon our path, grant us after the example of your servant, Jerome, so to learn of you according to your holy word, that we may find the light that shines more and more to the perfect day. Even Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And our collect for Thursdays, a collect for the renewal of life. O God, the King Eternal, whose light divides the day from the night and turns the shadow of death into the morning, drive far from us all wrong desires, incline our hearts to keep your law, and guide our feet into the way of peace, that, having done your will with cheerfulness during the day, we may, when night comes, rejoice to give you thanks. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And the prayer for this week, a prayer for quiet confidence. O God of peace, you have taught us that in returning and rest, we shall be saved. In quietness and confidence shall be our strength. By the might of your spirit, lift us, we pray, to your presence, where we may be still and know that you are God. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our brothers and sisters in Christ throughout the world and in every denomination, and particularly those throughout the Anglican Communion, remembering today especially the Diocese of Free State, Southern Africa, the Right Reverend Dinto Letlo Enyane Bishop. We pray also for our own Diocese of Southeast Florida and our Bishop, 
the Right Reverend Peter Eaton and his wife, Kate, and our companion diocese, remembering today especially the Diocese of Toliara, Madagascar, the Right Reverend Dr. Samatiana Johnson Razafindra Lambo, Bishop. O oh God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed son to preach peace to those who are far off and to those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you. Bring the nations into your fold. Pour out your spirit upon all flesh and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray for our own parish family and those dear to them. Remembering today, especially Becky's family, Patricia, Elaine, Priscilla, Steve, Joey, Julia, Bob and Pam, Judy, Ashley, Mindy, Dawn, Samra and Dash, Peter, Joe, Sal and Colleen, Chris, Andy, Brooke and family, Jim and Jerry, Debbie, and Victoria. We pray also today for our serve ministries, remembering especially our pastoral care team, that the members of Good Shepherd who are suffering or struggling may receive prayerful support from their fellow par parishioners. And the St. George's Dinner Ministry, that less fortunate individuals in the Northeast Corridor of Palm Beach County may know God's love while receiving a hot meal. Almighty and ever-living God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, hear our prayers for this parish family. Strengthen the faithful, arouse the careless, and restore the penitent. Grant us all things necessary for our common life, and bring us all to be of one heart and mind within your holy church. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, Amen. At this time, I invite your prayers of petition, intercession, and thanksgiving, either shared with all or held in the silence of your hearts. I'll have a drink of water. So Wendy asks us to pray for Haitian refugees who have been deported back to Haiti many of whom apparently have not lived there for a long time. They have nowhere to go. So for those of you who do not know the back story of this, after the Haitian earthquake uh, about 20 years ago, the country of Chile had a very generous refugee program and many Haitians uh, moved to Chile. However, uh, in there have been uh, successive movements very similar to our own country uh, where uh, these refugees were made to feel unwelcome. So the, the Haitians who ended up at under the bridge in Del Rio, that squalid camp, the most of them came from the country of Chile and they made the trek the entire length of coming up from Chile, which is in the south of South America all the way up to Texas. And so many of them indeed, uh, as Wendy points out, have never known Haiti. Those, those of them who were, you know, went as children to Chile uh, will not even remember Haiti. And of course, Haiti is in tremendous turmoil right now. It's in a way it's its worst, worst version of itself. And Haiti, of course, is the most impoverished nation in the Western hemisphere. So yes, so let us pray for the Haitian refugees and to accompany that, why don't we say the prayer for the human family. Oh God, you have made us, all of us, in your own image 
and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family and particularly those Haitian refugees who have been deported back to Haiti and those who are making their way still from Chile up to the United States. Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us, unite us in bonds of love and work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth. That in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. So yesterday evening, I had the privilege of sitting in the library with Father Doug and our three, three of our four youth confirmation candidates who will be confirmed by the bishop on Sunday. And uh, we were having a Zoom meeting with the bishop, also joined by uh, two of the three individuals who were received into the Episcopal Church on Sunday by the bishop. And uh, so it was, I thought of that as I prayed for Bishop Eaton uh, today. Uh, and uh, so, but in our uh, collect of the day, uh, you'll recall that one of the things that we said, let me go to it, is that uh, God declares his power chiefly in showing mercy. Well, uh, one of the things that most impressed the bishop when he was examining the candidates was when Edgar was able to identify the Hebrew word for mercy, also, uh, also translated as kindness, also translated as loving kindness, as the Hebrew word hesed. And so at that point he said, you, you indeed have been learning things. <laughs> So I wanted to teach them a little bit. I, I teach the confirmation class. So I wanted to teach them a little bit about Hebrew because it's a very different language. Uh, you read it backwards. It has no vowels. Uh, you know, there are lots of things that are interesting about Hebrew. So in any event, that was an interesting thing. So why don't we uh, pray for young persons and particularly for our confirmation candidates? God, our Father, you see your children growing up in an unsteady and confusing world. Show them that your ways give more life than the ways of the world, and that following you is better than chasing after selfish goals. Help them to take failure, not as a measure of their worth, but as a chance for a new start. Give them strength to hold their faith in you, and to keep alive their joy in your creation. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. And if you'd like to pray for them by names, in alphabetical order by first name, our confirmation candidates are Charlotte, Edgar, Sarah, and Zachary. So pray for them as we go on through the week. Why don't we continue now with the general thanksgiving? Almighty God, Father of all mercies, we, your unworthy servants, give you humble thanks for all your goodness and loving kindness to us and to all whom you have made. We bless you for our creation, preservation, and all the blessings of this life, but above all, for your immeasurable love in the redemption of the world by our Lord Jesus Christ, for the means of grace and for the hope of glory. And we pray, give us such an awareness of your mercies that with truly thankful hearts, we may show forth your praise, not only with our lips, but in our lives, by giving up ourselves to your service and by walking before you in holiness and righteousness all our days. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory throughout all ages. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to God, whose power working in us can do infinitely more than we can ask or imagine. 
Glory to God from generation to generation in the church and in Christ Jesus forever and ever. Amen. Thank you again for joining me this morning for morning prayer here at Good Shepherd Episcopal Church in Tequesta, Florida. May you have a blessed day. And remember, as you go out into the world today and greet your neighbors, be kind to him or her. Show God's chesed, his loving kindness, because one never knows what another is enduring in this world. Thank you again, and God bless.